Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dale here. For this um, quick little video, I got a, um, a Lenovo IdeaPad 100 laptop. It's a basic laptop, not a very expensive laptop. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace the hard drive with a new Samsung solid state drive. It's the, 8, it's the 860 Evo. Good drives. Got a million of them. Uh, I am going to clone the hard drive, but I'm not going to show that in this video. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to basically open it up and get to the hard drive. These are a little tricky if you've never done it before. Um, flip it over here. I've already removed all the screws. They're all the same length, so you don't need to worry about that. But we have to remove the keyboard from the top side. If all you're doing is removing the keyboard, there's three screws right here that hold the keyboard in from underneath. So at the very least, you have to get these three out to pop the keyboard out, which I've done. So now I'm just going to flip it back. And on these keyboards, there's a little seam across the top up here. It's very, very thin. You've got to be very careful going in there. But on this model, I found that starting in the middle, getting it lifted up enough to get your finger on it, and then the other tabs pop right out. There's four or five of them across the top here. So I'm going to get my very thin little tool in here. I'm going to start right in the center here. Like I said, if you get it up, In the right spot here. Kind of hold a little slight pressure on it. And pop these other tabs, you can hear them popping. Just like that. The connector for the keyboard is over here in this corner, not in the center. So be careful when you do pull it up. Keep that in mind. And then it kind of slides back just a little bit. And you can see the connector right here. Right here we got, there's a little black bar across there that we have to flip that up. Usually you can just get your finger in there or a little plastic tool. See how that bar just flips up. And then the ribbon cable comes right out. So that's the keyboard. There's going to be a total of, I think, eight screws under here. This one right here holds the optical drive in, so let's get rid of that. CD-ROM drive or DVD drive out. So I removed this screw right here. We're going to pop out the CD-ROM drive right here, guys. But you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws and eight counting this one here for the optical drive. Should just slide right out. Just like that. And then down here, if you take out the optical drive, there's two tiny little flathead Phillips screws right here that we have to remove. Which usually come out pretty easy. Just like that. And I'm going to remove these remain, remaining screws up here. And these are all the same length. You won't have to disconnect these cables here, by the way. You leave those intact. And there's one more down in right here. There, got all the screws out. Got the CD-ROM drive out. Now I'm going to go into the seam right here. There's a very narrow, very small little seam along the front here. You get a very thin tool very carefully and get it started because this whole bottom pan is going to peel right off. These generally come off pretty easy once you get it started. 
But again, you want to watch leaving tool marks, so if you can, use plastic tools. Just like that. If you just careful, kind of wiggle it, get the bottom pan off, and right here's the hard drive. Here's a puny little battery they put in these things. It's got one RAM slot, it currently has four gigabytes of DDR3, we're going to leave that alone. And then for the hard drive, there's one, two, three, four screws for this caddy that the hard drive's in, so I'm going to remove that. And they put a little warranty seal on that screw there, that's pretty common in these Lenovo's. slide it back out of the SATA port there just like that if you want to disconnect your battery it's this cable right here this is the battery there's a cable right here where you can just unplug the battery if you drop a metal tool in there or something yikes you don't want to do that so just to be safe go ahead and unplug your battery I've just done these so many times and I'm very careful never had a problem but if you're doing it just once on your own laptop, yes, disconnect your battery. And there's four screws, two on each side of the hard drive here to get it out of the little caddy here. And that just comes out like that. Now, like I said, I'm going to clone this hard drive onto the new Samsung SSD. I'm not going to show that process. Um, but then when I'm done, I'm going to put the new SSD back in, button it all back up, and it will be all done. So, I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. I went ahead and I cloned the hard drive on the new, on the new Samsung solid state drive. Um, I have a dedicated computer sitting over here I use just for cloning. The process took about 12-14 minutes. So, I'm going to put the new SSD back in there. Just like we took the old hard drive out, back in the bracket, same way. I mainly did this video so you can see how to get into this. But as far as cloning, there's a lot of different ways to clone your hard drive. A lot of times you can do it in the computer while the old hard drive is still in there. But you need a USB adapter to go onto the solid state drive into the USB port and you can use the manufacturer's cloning software with the exception of Samsung all the other manufacturers like like Crucial, Kingston, A-Data, Western Digital they all use the Acronis a proprietary version of the Acronis but to get the software you have to sign up and subscribe and all this stuff it's a Kind of a pain in the butt, but the software does work. Samsung has their own proprietary cloning software that is free to download, but you have to sign up and subscribe first. So I'm going to put these four screws back in. And when I'm done, I button it up. It, it'll boot right up, do a quick scan disk. And I'll add a little bit of zip to this otherwise slower computer with just a Pentium processor in it and 4 gigs of RAM. Don't forget to click on subscribe if you like the video. I would appreciate that. So I got the new SSD back in there. I'm going to hook the battery back up carefully here. Make sure it goes in all the way, of course. Just like that. Now we're going to put the pan back on. Snap it back in. First thing I'm going to do is put this optical drive back in. These little tiny screws. They 
Basically, we're going to do everything in reverse. Screw back in for the CD-ROM drive or optical drive here. And don't forget, forget to hook your keyboard back up. It's no worse than getting it all back together and you forget to plug in the keyboard. Use my trusty cordless here. Don't need to put these in too tight, just snug. Oops, my bad. I'm gonna actually do this by hand. This, this one's always a pain. And we got one more right here. Keyboard. You have to kind of tilt it up in the front a little bit so we can get that cable back in this little area right here. They don't give you a lot of extra cable to work with, so you got to be patient. All right, be difficult. I'm basically pushing it. Can you get in closer? You got to get it pushed in the cable here with the white line. So when you flip the bar down, it's basically covers up that white line on the ribbon cable. I'm going to put the kind of slide this back in like this first. Now, if you want to give this a dry run before you secure everything back down, that's fine. I usually do. There, so I'm going to put all the screws back in the bottom here. You can say they're all the same length. Nothing special there. I'll fire it up and we'll have a little bit faster laptop. Lenovo IdeaPad 100 series Intel Pentium processor. Appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, check out some of my other videos and have a great day.